hello everyone and welcome to the channel today we are going to be doing something very very special which is going through new unprocessed data taken from the brand new zwo c star s50 we are going to process these images all the raw data just to see how good of a quality the zwc star s50 really is so we have been given four different deep sky objects we have messier 51 messier 57 messier 81 and m101 uh, so let's go ahead and get started in processing all of these. So we're going to go ahead and start with M51. So let's first open up Serum. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to press the home button. We're going to go to Serum, C star S50 folder, and click on M51, hit open. Now, uh, I believe that with the ZWC star S50, we have the darks incorporated in with the light files just like the dwarf 2 telescope was so we are going to be using the osc pre-processing without ddbf uh, script on all of our images tonight uh, just like we normally do on all of them so let's just go ahead and run the script for m51 and we will come back to when it is completely stacked okay so it did not take long at all for it to stack and only took 10.98 seconds which is actually incredibly fast uh, in my opinion, it usually takes about two or three minutes. So we're going to go ahead and hit the open button and open our result dot fit to see what we have. So I'm quite excited to see this. So let's go ahead and open. And here is our uh, linear image. We're going to do an auto stretch. And there we go. You can already see the Whirlpool Galaxy right there in front of us. We haven't even done any post-processing on it, and it is already quite incredible to see, uh, given the fact that this was taken with a literally 2-inch lens. So let's go ahead and start the post-processing. We're going to run through it very, rather quickly because this video is not really a tutorial on how to do it. It is more of a tutorial uh, just showing exactly what this small device is capable of. Uh, so let's go ahead and do the background extraction and generate... It did it properly, so compute the background, hit apply. Exciting, okay. Uh, we're going to do our remove green noise as usual. Hit apply, close, image processing, uh, let's see, color calibration, photometric, and this is M51. As you can see, it already set the image parameters for this one, 252 and 290, hit okay says it can't be done so we're going to downsample it hit okay okay it still does not want to do it so um we're just going to go ahead and crop the image just like this let's go ahead and try to run through that photometric color coloration again and if it doesn't want to we will just do it without it no problem hit okay okay it did it properly so we're going to now go ahead and do our generalized hyperbolic stretch and bring out the details on this. So let's just go ahead and click here on our symmetry point and drag it out until we can see some details on this. There we go. We have some apply. We're going to go back to one. And um, those of you who do not want to stay around for the entire video, who just want to see the part where you actually see the results, you can skip towards the end of the video and I will have everything nice and set up there. So let's do histogram, drag it over here, apply. We're going to do our color calibration and just drag this area. Use current selection, background neutralization. And then select our galaxy. Use code and selection. Hit apply. You can see it corrected the coloration. We have our image processing, color saturation. And just drag this up. Hit apply. Image processing, color saturation. Drag it up again. It's a bit too much. So we're just going to turn on our background one. There we go. There's our image. So here is our first image there's still a little bit of noise in the background but i'm sure this could be fixed with a little bit more post-processing the whirlpool galaxy is looking quite beautiful already 
um, we're just going to go ahead and save this as a unique file and it was saved into our working directory um, let's see if we can open it we're having a few issues with my files app at the moment let's see m51 it does not want to load for us today so we're just going to go ahead and open serial back up and just zoom in here honestly i'm quite impressed with the details it was able to pull out but we will look further at the image when we are done uh, with the next one so this one is complete we're just going to save that just like that hit open and we're going to now move on to our m57 or the ring nebula i'm very much excited for this one because uh, it's a very small target but who knows how much detail it will be able to pull out so let's hit open and we are I, oops no i apologize we're going to hit home and we're going to set it as our working directory so m57 open we are going to go to our script and we are just going to run our script okay stacking for that one is complete that one took a little bit longer but that's hardly anything just 38 seconds and let's see what that 38 seconds was able to pull out for this very beautiful nebula so open it up we are going to do our result.fit and open it and without even doing the auto stretch we are already able to see the ring nebula i'm very very impressed with this because um the ring nebula is not a very big object and the fact that a two inch lens is able to pull this out is quite impressive so let's do an auto stretch there it is it's it's a bit uh, too much right there um so we're just going to go ahead and just get started with everything uh, we're just going to speed it up through this one just so that we can get it done quicker and get more to the results. So I'm just going to speed through this part. If you guys want um, to, to process along with it, you can just follow along with the first one that I did. I'm going to do the exact same process here as well. So let's just go ahead and get started with that. Okay, so I am done with the image and wow, would you look at the colors that this device was able to pull out of the ring nebula. You can see the dark center and the light blue middle along with the bright red outline of the nebula. I find this quite impressive, the fact that a 2 inch scope was able to pull out this much detail on such a small nebula. So I'm going to save this. Save as a unique file once again, and we are going to now move on to the next one. So open it up. Now I apologize, I made the same mistake again. We're going to go home, see star M81 now, and we're going to get started processing Messier 81. So um, once again, if you guys want, you can just speed through this part because I'm. you just follow through the first part if you want to do yeah, this as a tutorial. We're just going to go ahead and run the script for this one and get it started. Again, here is our finalized image now for the Bode's Galaxy. Just, just look at the detail on this. I'm, I, I'm, I'm still very much impressed. Look at the banding. You can see the stars inside of the galaxy, the little supernova remnants that are left here. Um, this is usually a very faint part of the galaxy. And the fact that we're able to see this again with a 2-inch wide telescope, this is incredible. This is amazing. I'm very excited about this. So... We're just going to save, save as a unique file, and let's get started on our final image, Messier 101, the pinwheel galaxy that currently actually has a supernova now showing up in the image. So let's go take a look at that. We're going to set home, see star, and go to our final folder, Messier 101, and run through our script. Okay, so here is our finished image for Messier 101. This is uh, just about the best I could do for the current moment. Of course, there's a lot more editing that I would like to do on um, uh, Snapseed and also some other programs that I actually have on my phone, which is very good for astrophotography as well. Um, but this is the best I can do for M101 at the current moment with this data. 
Uh, I find it very impressive right here. I'm not sure if you noticed, but the supernova remnant is actually right there and it is continuing to get brighter. I find it very cool that you can see all the cosmic bands in this one certain galaxy because this galaxy is actually not very bright at all. But the fact that we can actually see this, see how much detail is very, very impressive for this kind of telescope. So we're going to save this one, save it as a unique file. And now let's go ahead and look at all of our files. Okay, so first up is the Bode's Galaxy. I just want to take a minute and just admire the detail that we can see on the Bode's Galaxy. Um, of course, there's not a whole lot of color. Um, in a lot of professional mounts, you're able to see a lot of purple, a lot of pink, uh, a lot of blue. But just, just think for a minute. You can see a lot of detail in this image, correct? Yes, okay. There's a lot of detail in this image, but keep in mind the focal length and the aperture of this device. It is very, very, very small. And in comparison to this image that's here of the Dwarf 2 Bode's Galaxy that I also was able to capture, um, you can see a big difference in the amount of detail between Bode's Galaxy Dwarf 2, Bode's Galaxy ZWO. The ZWO C star has triumphed once again in the ability to capture completely impressive images for such a small aperture. Next, we have the Ring Nebula, which I'm honestly still blown away by the amount of color and detail that we're able to have here. Um, you can look into the image and see the inner parts of the ring. I still find that quite impressive since, it, again, it's a very small scope. It's portable. It's battery powered. There's... You wouldn't really expect something like this from the device that it is and for the price point that it's being sold at. Uh, next that we have, we have the Pinwheel Galaxy. The Pinwheel Galaxy is also very impressive since you can see the supernova, you can see the, the cosmic clouds, you can see the banding going through the entire thing. There's a lot of detail that's hidden in there that you can see and I'm sure that it would be brought out with more exposures than uh 250 which is what was used for this image and last but not least we have the whirlpool galaxy the whirlpool galaxy absolutely did not disappoint there's so much detail to be found in this image you can see the expansion of the entire galaxy across the image you can see the dark nebulae across it and you can see the cosmic clouding again the beautiful yellow coloring that we have there again this was all taken with the two inch zwoc star I'm very excited to see what other images it's able to capture. Um, there's some that, I, some that I would like to take, such as the Eagle Nebula. Hopefully we will be able to see things like the Pillars of Creation up in there. Um, I'd like to take pictures of the Dem Dumbbell Nebula. There's a lot of different things I'd like to try out. So um, hopefully we can get some more data in here. Hopefully we can try out the ZWO Sea Star Telescope and see what we can do with it ourselves. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope this was able to give you a little bit more insight of what this small device is actually capable of. Maybe you were as surprised as I was. I, I was very surprised, but in a very good way. So that's always a good thing. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video again. Uh, hopefully to get more data to be able to process more of these image and do a proper tutorial, not just a show off of what this device can do. So. Uh, again, thank you very much for watching the video. Please leave a like and subscribe and stay tuned for future videos. I wish you all clear skies and have a great night.